Now let's talk a little bit about MATLAB commands that we're going to be using throughout this course, uh, both for homework and for simulation and for the project. Uh, I included these MATLAB commands in this chapter, the introduction and review chapter, uh, so that you can be familiarizing yourself with these commands. Uh, and you know, I encourage you to study these commands and get, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, get used to using these commands uh, in programming. So I'm going to go over uh, briefly over these commands, and then after two slides, we're going to look at uh, how to implement these commands uh, in MATLAB environment. So we're going to look at the uh, assigning a name uh, to a scalar, uh, scalar operations, assign a name to a matrix, assign a name to a vector, a matrix dot product, matrix cross product, transpose of a matrix, determinant of a matrix, inverse of a matrix, uh, define symbolic parameters or characters, uh, define a matrix that carries symbolic parameters, make the answer look pre pretty without simplification, and then simplify answers, uh, we're going to talk also about loop statements, conditional statements, uh, creating a function, your own function. So you can make your own function and then uh, put whatever uh, expressions you need in that function. And then we're going to learn how to recall this function that you just created uh, in MATLAB. We're also going to cover some commands for plotting and simulation. So these commands include assigning figure numbers, uh, plotting several lines together in the same plot, uh, turning on the plot grid on and off, uh, assign a title to the plot, assign x-axis label, assign y-axis label, include a legend in your graph, uh, assign fixed range uh, for plot axes, plot other lines on the same plot, uh, plot in 3D, change the view angle of the plot, change the curve uh, values in the plot, so this is useful for simulation, pause the program, redraw uh, a plot, and then finally closing a plot window um, that you already have created. So we're going to look in the next slide for uh, how to put these together and how to implement them in the MATLAB environment. Uh, so you can learn how to do this and then use it for, uh, for this course. In this slide, I'm going to show uh, some uh, MATLAB commands and robotic toolbox commands that are useful in general uh, for this course. So this is kind of an introductory uh, video on MATLAB, uh, actually, for people who are not acquainted with it. And it will show you a few useful commands uh, that you can use throughout the course. Okay, uh, I'm going to be using MATLAB release 2020A and the Robotics Toolbox release 10.4 uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, so the first thing here, of course, I you know I already typed all the commands that I want to talk about here um, in an M file. So I'm just going to copy these commands and paste it into the uh, the workspace or the command window so that you can see how they look like and what the results are. Okay, uh, so the first command here is clear. And this command is uh, a command that clears all of your workspace. If you look here on the right window, all these here are uh, created variables in the workspace. So if you type clear, it will clear everything uh, in that window and then all of your workspace will be cleared. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And as you can see, everything here disappeared. Now, as you can notice, you know, there's still a lot of stuff here in the command window. Uh, so if you want to clear the command window, you can use CLC. So that clears everything in the command window. It does not clear the workspace uh, unless you clear it in the previous command that we had here for clear. Okay. So if I put CLC here, it will clear uh, the command window. All right. So uh, now I'm going to talk about a few things, the ba very basics that uh, everybody should know uh, before we start this course. Uh, if you would like to assign a name to a scalar, uh, we can just put the name and then equal sign and then uh, whatever value you want to assign for this. So here I'm going to call this n equals to 7. And as you can see, it created a variable called n and the value for this variable is 7. And you can see n here in the workspace that it was created. 
Okay, now if I would like to do some operations to that scalar, uh, let's call for example new variable L, and I'm just going to do some uh, operations like 5 times cosine pi divided by 2 times n minus 5 minus n. Uh, just, you know, random operations. I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and that gave me a value for L to be negative 29.5. And as you can see here in the workspace window, there is a, a value for L that was added here. Uh, if I'd like to assign a matrix and call it a name, um, I can use, for example, the name A equals to, and then between two square brackets, I put the first row, and between uh, the elements of the first row, I can put either spaces or commas. And then when I put semicolon, that means I'm moving down to uh, the next row. So the next row, again, uh, between elements, you will put either spaces or commas and then semicolon again to go to the next uh, row. The third row here I have again three elements and between the elements I have space or commas. Okay, so that makes three by three uh, matrix. I'm gonna call A. So if I copy this and paste it here, I got a three by three matrix called A. And you can see A here is defined now in the workspace. If I'd like to create a vector Again, a vector usually is a column. Um, here, in this case, I, I call it B equals to, and again, between two square brackets, I'm going to call uh, this column B. And I put 5 for the first element, and then semicolon. That means I went to the second uh, row, and then 6 in the second row, and then 7 in the third row. So if I copy this here, and paste it, then I got a vector called B. And that vector here is showing as well in the workspace. Now, if I'd like to perform a dot product to any matrix, I can use the multiplication sign here. So in this case, I'm going to multiply A times B, and I'm going to call it C. Uh, as we saw earlier, of course, we have to look at the dimensions. They have to be consistent. We know that A is a 3 by 3, and B is a 3 by 1. Uh, so that is consistent, as we saw earlier. So I'm going to copy this, and of course we expect C to be a 3 by 1 as well. I'm going to paste it here, and that gives me the new vector called C, and that appears also here in the workspace. If I'd like to perform a cross product, I can use the command cross, and between two brackets I have the arguments for, for that command. What I need to put here, I need to put the two vectors that I'm crossing, so I'm going to cross B and C, and I'll call it D, okay? So I'm going to copy this, paste it here, and that would give me the cross product B cross C, okay? And I called it D, and as you can see, D here appeared in the workspace as well. Uh, if I would like to find a transpose of a matrix, of course, you know that we, we saw earlier that transpose is the columns become rows and the rows become columns. So I can use the command transpose and between two brackets the argument I put is uh, the matrix that I would like to transpose. So I'm going to transpose A and I'm going to call it E. If I copy this, I paste it here, that gives me the transpose of A. I called it E and E also appears in the workspace. Notice that when we put A, we put 1, 2, 3 in the first row, 4, 5, 6 in the second row, uh, 7, 8, 9 in the third row. When we transpose this, the row became columns. So 1, 2, 3 in the first column, 4, 5, 6 in the second column, 7, 8, 9 in the third column. Okay. Now another way to find the transpose also is instead of using the command transpose, you can just put the matrix that you would like to transpose and then put the... Um, uh, the, the single quotation mark at the end. So I can copy this. I'm going to call it still E. And as you can see here, again, I've got the same results. E equals to A with a single quotation mark. And that would give me, again, the transpose of a matrix. Uh, now, if I'd like to find the determinant of the matrix, I can use the command det, D-E-T. 
and between two brackets I put the argument for this command which is the matrix that you'd like to find the determinant for uh, so in this example I'm going to call it f and I'll find the determinant of a and call it f and that would be of course a scalar so uh, as you can see here it's very close to zero that's negative 9.5 times 10 to the power negative 16 okay so this is a very small number and as you can see here f also appears right here in uh, the workspace okay now if i'd like to find the inverse of a matrix i can use the command inv which stands for inverse and then between two brackets i can put the argument here which is uh, the matrix that i would like to find the inverse for so i'm going to use this command to find the inverse of a and i'm going to call it g and of course the inverse of a matrix again will be the, the same dimensions as the matrix it's matrix itself it has to be a square matrix full rank and if I execute this, then I got this inverse of the matrix. So G is the inverse of a matrix. Uh, and all these numbers are multiplied by 10 to the power 16. So make sure that you don't ignore this number. Okay. So it's uh, uh, times 10 to the power 16 for all these numbers inside the matrix. And of course, as you can see, G here appeared in my workspace. Uh, now, if I would like to use symbolics, uh, I can use a command sims uh, if I would like to have more than one a symbolic variable or I can use sim without the s if I'm defining only a single command okay uh, or a single variable so here I'm going to be defining uh, so many variables that I'm going to use later in this session so I'm going to use sims and then space and then you just list the variables the space between them so I'm going to have a b c d all the way down to l all these are symbolic variables uh, and then at the end I'm gonna put real which means that expect these variables to be real so whenever you do some, some kind of operations uh, anything that would be not real uh, would be ignored like if you have an imaginary number um, that can be possible it will eliminate that imaginary number so this is basically defining that all of these variables will be uh, real numbers okay so I'm gonna take this copy that and paste it here And now I have uh, symbolics that are defined, and you can see them all here in the workspace. They're all defined as symbols that I can be using whatever I want. Now, if I'd like to define a matrix that carries symbolic parameters, uh, for example, I'm going to define here a 3x3 three three matrix. Again, the first row here, and then semicolon, second row, semicolon, and then third row. I'm going to call this H. So since I already defined these symbolic variables, I can use them to fill this matrix. And as you can see here, H is defined as a 3x3 three three matrix that carries these uh, symbolic variables. Now, there's a command called pretty. And what it does, basically, it makes this look a little bit better. So um, you can just put whatever operations that you want when you have symbolics. And that command makes it look a little bit better. Uh, especially if it's big it does not do any simplifications it only makes it look a little different um, so as you can see here when I multiplied a times h a was uh, three by three numbers and h was three by three symbol symbolics and multiplying them to together usually looks you know quite ugly so here it made it look a little bit pretty now um, Another command here that we can use, which is simplify. So this command basically simplifies um, any variable or any matrix or any expression that can be simplified. Uh, so if you have sine, sine squared plus cosine squared, for example, of the same angle, it replaces it by one and so forth. So I'm gonna uh, just use it for, to simplify A. A is already simplified, but you know, just to use the command. And I'm gonna call this matrix J. So I'm gonna copy this paste it here uh, actually I, I don't need to call simplify does not need uh, a new name so I'm just gonna call it oh and it, it should also include let me let me change it in here there is no name that needs to be specified I'm gonna put this times H as well 
Okay, so it's gonna multiple, it's gonna give me the same matrix here, but it will simplify it so that it can carry uh, or simplify the things that can can be simplified. Okay, so this is a simplified matrix that was uh, a result of an operation of multiplication of a symbolic three by three matrix and a three by three numerical matrix. Okay, now let's talk about loop statements uh, for. So that loop statement here, if you look at this, it starts with four and you can put the variable that you would like to increase as an index. And this equal to the first start, the start of that variable. And then uh, after the column here, you put the step size. I'm going to put step size one. And then the other column, uh, the third value here is the end for the variable. So this will start i as equals to 1, and then every loop it will increase the i by 1 all the way until i reaches 12, and then it will exit this loop. Okay? Now inside the loop, I had a variable here, I called it x, and this x will be a vector that has uh, a vector index here, which goes 1, 2, 3 for each loop. And then this x equals to i times 2 plus 1, just a random number that I put here. So this, this would create um, a vector that has 12 elements as i goes uh, from 1 to 12. Okay, once i reaches 12, then it will exit, you know, with this end command. All right, so I'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it here. And as you can see, This is where I started my command, my for loop. So the first loop, the result was x equals to 3. So that's the first value of x. And the second loop, I got the second value of x, which is the second value of that vector. And that, uh, and that gave me the first value and the second value, 3 and 5. And then the third loop, I got the third value added, and then so forth and so forth, all the way to the end. So by the end of this command, I got all of my 12 values uh, that I have for this loop, okay? So that's a loop uh, that we can use also in our programming. Uh, another thing here is uh, conditional statements. It's if, else if, and else, okay? So the first if here, you can put the variable that you'd like to check and see if uh, uh, the condition is, is satisfied or not. And then after this variable, you put two different things here. Equal equals means that check if this is equal to seven or not, okay? If you put, for example, here, if you, if you look at this, less than or equal, that means if it's less than or equal, and so forth. So every time you have to put, for this conditional command, you have to put two of these equal or more than or less than uh, symbols, and then it will check this variable against this uh, value. If it's true, then it will obey or, or ex, you know, um, execute the command that comes after this. If this condition is not true, then, then it will go to the next line, else if. Okay? Else if you have a new variable with a new condition. So if this condition is satisfied, then it will go and execute the command that goes next to this. If this condition is not true, it will go to the next else. Of course, you can put as many else ifs as you want. But then the last one here is else. This one has a single else. That means there's no condition. So if none of these conditions are satisfied, that means do this. So this is done if none of these conditions are satisfied. Okay. And once this conditional statement is finished, then it will reach the end and it will spit out whatever values that uh, were executed in that conditional statement. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so what I'm saying here that if the third value of x equals to 7, this is the third value, as we can see it equals to 7, then replace it by 7 plus 1, which is 8. If this condition is not true, then if the third value is less than or equal 8, if you can see here, the value is less than or equal 8, then it will replace this value by 8 plus 1, which is 9. Else, if none of these 
uh, uh, conditions are true, then put x of 3 as equals to 0. Okay? So if we execute this, we can see that it changed this value to 8. So the, the very first condition is true. The second condition is still true, but it did not, it did not reach the second condition since the first condition is already true. Once it, one, one of the conditions is true, it goes straight to the end. Okay? So that's the conditional statement. Now, uh, if we'd like to create a function, our own function, that we can specify whatever we need to specify inside of it, uh, what we can do is we can specify a name of a function. So we have to open a new M file. Okay? So I'm going to put here a new M file. And I'm going to put some uh, functions in there. So inside this file, I need to type some commands. So I'm going to copy this as an example. And I'm going to put it here. Okay. So uh, let me take this off. I'm going to put function. I need to copy this whole thing. I'm going to put function and specify the function's name okay so the function's name is ml1 underscore mult and then the arguments i'd like to put for my functions are x and y and the outputs that i'd like to come out of this function is x y and z that i put between square brackets so the square square brackets are the outputs of my function and the round brackets are the inputs to my function okay and then inside this function i would like to have this command, I'm going to remove this column. So this command here, basically I'm defining z to be equal to 2 times x plus 3y. Since the x and y are already input here in the function, I can use them, and that will give me z. Once the function ends, it will give me x, y, and z as an output of this function. Okay? And I'm going to put end afterwards, which indicates that the function has ended. So here I'm going to put end. Now this is very important. Before I call this function, I'll have to name it exactly the same name as the function itself. So here the function is ml1 underscore mult. Okay? So I'll have to go and save this exactly the same way as uh, I, I named it here. So if you see here, for example, I'm going to call it ml1 underscore mult. I'm going to save that, and now I should be ready and able to use this function. Okay, now I'm back here to my command line. Since I defined the function already, I can go ahead and use it. So to recall the function, I'm going to use it here. Let me copy this. I'm going to name the three output variables out of my function L, M, and N. It doesn't have to be the same names as the names that you use inside the function. And then I'll use the function that I uh, named, and then inside I'll put the arguments, the two arguments that I specified for my function. Okay, so here I put 21 and 30. So let me copy this and paste it here. And as you can see, once I executed that command, it spit out L and M and Z, uh, L and M and N. So uh, this is L and M and N. Uh, the reason I put Z here because in my function, if you remember here, I should have suppressed what am I looking at? Oh, I'm sorry here. In my function, I have I should have suppressed this. So if I put semicolon here, the Z will not show up in my command window. Okay? So I'm going to redo this again. I'm going to paste it again, and as you can see, once I put the command, it gave me L, M, and N. Previously, it gave me also Z, which is printed because I did not have this suppressed uh, with a semicolon. So whenever you don't want this to be printed out on your, on your command window, just put a semicolon at the end of the command, and that would keep the variable. It will uh, save it into that variable Z, but it will not show it up in the command window. Okay, if you remove this, then it will show up in the command window as what happened here. Okay, 
All right, now we're going back to our commands. Uh, let's learn something new about plotting. So I'm going to be, you know, initially here defining some um, variables. I'm going to define Q1 just randomly as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that I'll use to plot later on. So I'm going to define this. So this vector here, Q1, is from 0 to 5. And then I'm going to define Q2 from 10 to 15. Again, just random numbers. That's Q2. And I'm going to define Q3, again, random numbers from 20 to 25, OK? And then I'm going to also randomly assign a time vector here. I'm going to call it time. And that has the values from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5, actually from 0 to 0 0.5. So each one of these um, vectors have six elements, OK? I'm going to see how I'm going to plot these uh, step by step. Uh, the first thing here, you can specify the figure number if you'd like. If you don't specify, it will just go and uh, start from number one and go forward. OK, so for me, I'm going to just specify the figure number. I'm going to call it figure nine. So it will start a figure, as you can see here. Let me make this window a little smaller so you can see everything that's happening. Okay, so I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to put this figure here. All right, so, you know, anything that we do to this figure should be able to appear uh, right away. Okay, so now we have figure nine. You can see the number here, figure nine. And then if I'd like to plot several lines onto that figure, I can put this command here. I'll show you this command in details. OK, so what is this command? First, I call this my plot. I don't have to call it a name, but I, if I call it a name, I can recall any one of these uh, arguments in my plot at any time. If I don't call it a name, then I don't have it defined as any specific name. OK, and then I use the plot command. Uh, so this is the plot that would give me uh, the uh, lines that I have in my plot. And then here you start putting the x-axis. I'm going to put the x-axis as y, which is already defined. And then this, the y-axis, I'm going to put q1, which is already defined. Between these two is a, a, a column or a comma. And then between two quotation marks here, you can specify few things. Here I'm going to specify that I would like this line to be a solid line. This means solid line. And I'd like the color to be red. Okay, so that's the first line right here. And then another comma, you can put another line. I'm going to specify again the x-axis to be time, y-axis to be q2. And then between two quotation marks, I would like this to be a dotted line. And then each um, value of this line, I would like it to, to have a dot as well. And I'd like this line to be colored green. OK. Now, the third line, again, you, put, you can put comma and put as many lines as you want. I'd like the x-axis for the third line to be a time and the y-axis to be q3. And between the two brackets here or the two quotation marks, I need this line to be dashed line. And I'd like the elements or the values for uh, each one of the line points to be marked as a plus. And I'd like the line color to be blue. OK. And then afterwards, after you are finished with all the lines that you'd like to draw in the same plot, you can specify also some more arguments. Here, I'd like to specify the line width to be 3. OK. So you can also specify that line width to be 3. So if I copy this and paste it here, pay attention to what's going to happen here in the figure. OK. As you can see here in the figure, I got my three lines. The first line is red, solid line. The second one is green and dotted line. The third line is blue and dashed line. OK. 
All right, now if I would like, as you can see here, the background is solid white. I would like the grid to be on, so it's easier to see values. So I can just use this command grid on. I'm gonna copy this and paste it here. And then notice what happens here to the background. Instead of white, you'll have a grid. And there you go, I don't know if you can see the grid, but now we have a grid uh, in this background. If, I, if you'd like to specify a title for your plot, you can use the title command and then inside uh, the argument you can put two quotation marks and just put whatever name you want to name as a title for your plot. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. I want you to notice this area. That's where the name of the plot is going to come to. And there you go, my graph. Okay. And then I can assign the label for x-axis. You can use x-label. And between two quotation marks, you can put whatever name you want to label the x-axis with. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put time, comma, and seconds. Okay. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. And I want you to pay attention to under the x-axis. This is going to come to this area. And as you can see here, we got the time label. Same thing, we can assign a label for the y-axis. I'm going to call it variable 1 in units. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. And I'd like you to pay attention to this side of the y-axis where this name is going to be placed, as you can see here. OK, we can also include the legend. So the legend command, you can see here, I can use legend command. OK. And for the legend, I can use whatever um, names I would like. So here I put between two quotation marks, theta underscore one. When I put underscore, that means it's sub. So theta sub one, and then theta sub two, and then theta sub three. And then I can specify the location again between two quotation marks, location. And the next quotation marks, I can specify where I want this legend to be. So here I put northeast outside. Okay, so that means northeast in this area, outside means outside of the chart, so it's going to come right here. Okay, of course, I can put northeast inside, that will place it here, or I can put northwest or southeast or southwest or middle, uh, whatever I want. Okay, so if I copy this command and paste it here, I want you to pay attention to this area, that's where this legend is going to go to. And as you can see, the legend is added right here. OK, now the next command I want you to learn is the axes. Uh, these axes here are assigned automatically. But if you'd like, for example, whenever you do simulation, um, you know, these lines will be moving. So you don't want the scale of this uh, graph to be changing all the time. Uh, so you can specify the axes, the x-axis and y-axis. OK, so here you can use the command axis and then you can put the range for X. I put negative one to one and the range for Y, I put zero to 30. So the range for X is negative one to one. So that would take me a whole one to the left side of this graph and a whole half to the right side of this graph. So these lines will look much smaller. And then for the Y axis, I'm going to put zero to 30, which is about five points or five, five units more than what it is right now. OK, so I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And I want you to pay attention to what happens to uh, the axes here and how they change. OK, so as you can see now, my x axis starts at negative 1 to 1 and my y axis starts from 0 to 30. Now, if I'd like to plot uh, other lines on the same plot, OK, I'm going to discard this plot now. But I can use again, I can use, I can name the plot first. I'm going to call the first uh, line my one and use the plot command and just specify that particular line. So I'm going to specify time and q1. So let me do that. Copy and paste. So this is a new graph now. Um, and I only have one line that I just plot here. Now, if I'd like to plot another line on the same graph, using different command, I can just put hold on, I can use this command, hold on. 
which means that whatever comes after this command would be on the same plot. Okay. Now for the second line, I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, a name my two, and again I'm gonna use the same command plot and put time and q two. Okay. I'm gonna copy this, paste it here, and pay attention how the second line is gonna come to the same plot as you see here. Okay, and once I'm done with plotting all the things that I want in the same plot, I can use hold off. Basically hold off, it stops uh, plotting to the same, uh, the same window. Okay. All right. Um, now, since I have uh, 3D plots as well, I can use plot three. So that gives me a 3D uh, plot which means that I define X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna call this my A, I call this plot, and I'm gonna use the command plot3, which means 3D plot. And here, instead of specifying only the X and Y values, I'm gonna specify the X, the Y, and the Z values. Okay, same, same uh, format that we had before, except that we added here a Z value. And then between the two quotation marks, you can put the same things that you want. So here I'm, I'm specifying solid line, that's red. And then this is my second line, time and Q1 and Q3. And I'd like this line to be dotted line with the major points uh, that, that are in this line to be dotted like this and the line to be green. And I'd like the line width now to be one, okay? So let me copy this command. Of course, since I put hold off, it's gonna replace whatever's here with the new lines. It's not gonna add on top of the lines that we had before. So if I execute this command, now I got my, myself a new plot that's 3D, okay? And I have three lines that are uh, defined. I don't see the third one though. Oh, I only defined two lines, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I only defined the two lines here. So time and Q1, Q2 and time Q1, Q1, Q3. So that's the two lines that we see here. Now, if I'd like to change the view, of course, I'm doing this by you know using my mouse right now, but I can specify it also using the command line. So I can use view and between two brackets too. So that give me the two uh, dimensional view, X and Y only. Okay, or I can use view three, which is gonna give me a three uh, D view of my uh, my plot, as you can see right here. Okay, I can also specify the azimuth and elevation of my viewpoint. So in that case, I put view, and then I put two arguments here. The first one is the azimuth, and the second one is the elevation. So that would give me a customized view of where I would like to look at this uh, plot from. Okay. As you can see, I just put 40 and 15, just random numbers, and it gave me the view uh, that you see right there. Uh, another way to specify the viewpoint, you can specify the view angle in Cartesian coordinate space. So here I can put the X, Y, and Z of the coordinate space of where my eye would be looking at this. So if I copy this and paste it here, it will change the view again. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see here, I have two lines, uh, and what I'm about to tell you here is very important to you know to learn because it will help you in the simulation uh, that we got, we're going to see later on. Uh, but you can change the values of these points. As you can see, there are points here that are making up the line. You can change the values and then uh, plot again, so this line will start moving to the new values. And the command for this is set. Okay, so after you put set between two brackets, the first thing is you need to specify which line you're talking about. And that's why I called my graphs names at the beginning. If you remember here, my A, if I did not call this plot my A, it would not know these lines, okay? But here, since I, fortunately, I, I called them a name, uh, I can use this name to recall these points and change them as I wish. So I'm gonna go set and my A of one. Why did I specify one? because I have two lines in this uh, plot, right? My A had two lines. This is the first line, and this is my second line, okay? So here I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm specifying 
that I would like to set my A plot, the first line of that plot. Okay, what do I want to change? The next command is I can specify what I want to change. I want to change the X data. Okay, so I'm going to change the X data. That's if you remember the X data was the time. So the new data that I'd like, I'd like two times the time. So double the time. Okay. And then I also want to change the Y data. Uh, the Y data used to be for the first line. Let's see what it was. The Y data was Q1. So now I want it to be Q1, still the same. And then the Z data, I want it to be Q3. Let me see what it was before. It was Q2. Okay. So that would change the time to make it double time. And the Q2 will be uh, changed to the values of Q3. Okay. So if I copy this, <clears throat> And I want you to pay attention, this was the red line. So the red line will be changing right here, the red line that you see. So if I copy this and paste it here, pay attention to the red line, how it's going to change. Okay, here you go. So as you can see, the line have changed. Okay. Um, another command, when, whenever you're doing a simulation, again, in another session, we're going to show how you can do simulation and use the uh, loop and other methods to make this move um, in a simulation. Uh, but another command that you can use also is a pause. So pause and between two brackets, you can specify how much you want to pause your program uh, in seconds. Okay, so I'm going to say pause 0 0.2. It's not going to do anything because there's no ongoing command uh, to pause. <clears throat> uh, another command here to redraw the plot, uh, you can uh, say draw now. So this basically refreshes the plot every at every time step. <coughs> um, we don't have any time steps, but you know it's something for you uh, to know. And then once you are done, you can close your plot windows uh, one at a time or multiple at a time, or you can say close all, and it will close all of your plot windows. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, say close, and I'm gonna close only figure nine since that's the only figure I have. I'm going to change this to 9, and as, I, as soon as I execute this command, this window will disappear. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so um, once uh, you are familiar with MATLAB uh, and how you can use MATLAB and the different commands, you know, it's a good idea to practice more, uh, play with it as much as you can. Uh, so that you can be ready for uh, the next chapters and the next commands that you're going to get with Robotics Toolbox. All right, well, I hope this video is helpful for MATLAB. Uh, this is the end of chapter one, and hopefully it will be very uh, helpful for you for this course and in future courses as well. Thank you.